Well, welcome back to Finance Uncut. On today's episode, we have a warning about the US dollar from billionaire Stan Drunken Miller. Billionaire investor Stanley Drunken Miller says that the US dollar will lose its reserve currency status by 2036. Now, this is on the back of the real bond king, Jeff Gunlock, also a billionaire investor, saying that he thinks the US dollar will lose its reserve currency status by the end of this decade. And I think it's Felix, uh, Felix Zalouf. Uh, don't hold me to that. Someone can fact check me. But I think it was him that said that uh, the US will lose its reserve currency status even sooner than what Jeff Gunlock is saying. So let's cut to a clip now uh, and have a look at what uh, Stan Drunken Miller just said. Let's talk about the dollar. And 85% of the transactions are still done in the dollar. You pointed out in a recent speech that you think we've crossed the Rubicon. Are you comfortable saying what you said there, that for the first time in your career, you think we lose reserve status at some point? I'm comfortable with it. That's my central case. As you know, Joe, I can change my mind. But yeah, um, you said that to some extent, the Fed is enabling the fiscal transfers. It's not to some extent. They couldn't be doing this without the Fed. The Fed is monetizing their activity. I mentioned all the QE after vaccine confirmation and retail sales. We've had 850 billion of direct transfers. 575 billion of them came after retail sales were above trend. 575 of the 850 billion. I'm old enough to remember the, the bond market vigilantes. I used to be one of them. Without the Fed buying, I don't know what the exact number is, I think it's 60% of all the debt issued, the, the bond markets would be totally rejecting this. So they are enabling this massive expansion in fiscal policy. And the problem is, if you end up getting inflation, and frankly, even if you don't, the debt is going to be so big you remember I did my entitlement talks eight or nine years ago. That's all happened except for one thing, the interest rate level. So we're right now in the crux of when the demographic, when the baby boomers accelerate in terms of, of getting Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, that stuff. Right as we're doing that, we just put six trillion of new debt on. Again, all enabled by the Fed. These guys could not be doing it. Bond rates would go to a prohibitive level. So my, my issue here is, in the future, um, as we go forward, if you look at, do you have chart five up there? Let's get it. I think we can do it. Uh, which one? Uh, it's federal spending, Social Security, major health care programs, federal spending is a percent of GDP. Let's this see, is gotta... the CBO. This is not me. Okay, and they're saying if 10 years go to 4.9%, which is their normalized projection, the interest expense alone will be close to 30% of GDP every year. That's basically what we just spent on the COVID emergency in the last year. There is no way we can afford to have 30% of all government outlays be, be toward interest expense. So what will happen is the Fed will have to monetize that. When they monetize it, um, I believe it'll have horrible implications for the dollar. And that's why I said in that speech, yes, that I think it's more likely than not within 15 years we lose reserve currency status. Can we go to um, the chart on the dollar specifically? Because I think this is really important. Last spring, in the midst of an equity market meltdown, and I've been trading for 40 years and I've never seen anything like this, Right in the middle of an equity market meltdown, the bond market went down 18 points one day. And everybody thought it was macro traders like me and others that were rejecting the, the implications of the CARES Act. The Fed did a deep dive. And by hindsight, foreigners sold a trillion dollars, a trillion um, of treasuries overnight as we were proposing the CARES Act. They've continued to sell treasuries ever since then. Why is that important? Because for 20 years, treasuries have been the go-to asset 
of foreigners to hedge global portfolios with. In every case, whenever you had a problem in the equity market or in the world economy, they fled to treasuries and they fled to the dollar. Last spring, that was violated. So since then, they've continued to sell treasuries. So what we've gone from is for 20 years, an average flow of 500 billion a year into treasuries from an outflow out of treasuries. Uh, so when you have a $700 billion current account deficit, our estimate for the year, you need capital to flow in to offset that. If you just erase 500 billion inflow and turn it into an outflow, you see the pressure will put on the dollar. A reasonable person might ask, well, if that's true, why did the dollar not go down from March to July? Very simple. Um, who was the biggest beneficiary of COVID? Obviously the massive digital transformation companies, Google, Microsoft, not so massive, but Zoom, those kind of names. What country dominated in terms of those names? The United States of America. So the $500 billion outflow out of bonds was offset by a massive inflow from, from world central banks from sovereign wealth funds into our equity market. Um, by July, they had become, that had become pretty much in the market. The relative prices had gone up and frankly, the vaccine profile was starting to look better. So that is when the dollar peaked as that offset started to diminish. And as you know, Joe, the vaccine tends to cause a rotation out of growth stocks into value stocks our big advantage over here are the growth stocks. So that's why I think the pressure on the dollar is gonna continue. Before we get to the latest CPI data and what that means for the markets, let's cut to a clip from another billionaire who's issuing a warning, Leon Cooperman. Uh, Larry Summers gave me an A plus and he's a, he's a Democrat and he's a very brilliant guy, a very good economist, you know, a man worth listening to. And I think what he said recently is that the fiscal policy being followed by the country is the most irresponsible he's ever seen. You know, something is going to give in the end, and I suspect the dollar will give um, and uh, interest rates will rise. And let's face it, you know, the market is facing the fact that taxes are going up, interest rates are going up, inflation is going up, and we have a reasonably richly appraised market. So cyclically, I'm engaged, mm -hmm. but I got an eye on the exit. And I suspect the market will be lower a year from today, but I don't have to make that guess now. You know, this is not going to end well, but nobody, myself included, knows when it's going to end. We just watch the various things that normally would indicate an end. So with the latest uh, CPI numbers coming out, um, Lynn Alden uh, compares today's environment to the 1940s. Um, and you can see on the next chart, so you can see here, this is a CPI in blue and the three months month treasury bill. So she's comparing the three big spikes in the 1940s of inflation or CPI, sorry, uh, while the central bank held rates virtually uh, to zero. So this is the uh, chart here. So you can see the three spikes in of CPI, which uh, hit almost 20, 20% there. Uh, people forget about this period in the 1940s uh, and early 50s where there was quite a lot of uh, CPI uh, price increases. All the while, uh, the central bank held rates to virtually zero. They were, um, yeah, di didn't really raise rates much at all, as you can see here. Uh, so this is a chart from Lynn. This is just the latest uh, CPI numbers. Um, guys, if you guys don't know, Lynn does have a free newsletter. Um, if you're watching this channel, that means you're interested in macro, investing, economics. Uh, check out Lynn. Uh, just Google her. Go to her website. Um, sign up. She's got a free newsletter. She's got some other things that you know you can you can subscribe to and, and pay. Uh, but she is one of the best macro thinkers uh, in the game today. Um, I really, really like her stuff. Uh, Luke Groman is another guy who, who does a lot of great work on the macro side of things. Uh, and another uh, another person that I'd highly recommend subscribing to. He's got uh, also some things you can pay, um, but also some free stuff 
um, free newsletter, free blogs, is Chris uh, McIntosh from Capital Exploits. Uh, brilliant. Those three, if you guys sign up to those three, get their free stuff. Um, you know, maybe you know if you think that they provide value and you want to subscribe and 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 pay, uh, do so. You uh, you won't regret it. That's for sure. So this uh, recent month on month um, CPI increase was the la- largest or the highest since eighty one eighty two. <laughs> so nearly 40 years uh nearly 40 years and uh old mate uh, fed chairman powell uh, and his fed colleagues uh saying it's transitory transitory you probably heard that word transitory a lot well they're right technically they're right transitory just means not permanent so the 1970s stagflation was transitory the 1920s uh, Weimar Germany hyperinflation was transitory. It did not last forever. It wasn't permanent. So technically, technically, uh, the Fed uh, is right. So Lynn thinks that um, uh, that what we're going to see is is similar to the 1940s. So she, you know, I've shared in other videos where I think we we could be seeing a 73, 74 style, you know, where asset prices crash, the stock market crashes. You know, back then it crashed fifty percent nominally, while we had CPI at twelve percent. Lynn thinks it's it's going to be more like the nineteen forties, where we get these spikes in CPI, while the central bank holds rates to zero. And what does that mean for gold? Well, right now I am buying uh, gold and silver on any weakness, on any pullbacks. That's me personally. That's not me giving advice. Uh, I just I see more upside in the metal. I do understand that if there is a stock market crash and there is a liquidity event that both gold and silver, silver in particular, but gold less so, um, uh, can have a, a, a decent little pullback. Uh, I don't think as much as <clears throat> as the stock market. And I think I've shared in other videos back in March last year when the market crashed, what, 32% from memory? Gold went down, what, 10 12%, something like that. Uh, don't have the exact numbers in front of me. So um, certainly it performs a lot better than risk assets uh, when when there's a liquidity event happening. Um, and look, with that, I do have, um, you know, as part of my portfolio, US dollars, uh, because if there is a liquidity event, and there is a chance that that could happen, um, then there will be a spike in the US dollars. Uh, in, in the US dollar. So that'll just happen. And Jim Rogers, I've shared this before, Jim Rogers hates the US dollar. Uh, doesn't hate it from a patriotic point of view. He just hates it because he thinks it's ultimately going down and going to collapse. Just like uh, Jeff Gunlock, um, Stan Drunken Miller are now warning. However, Jim says in a uh, liquidity event market crash, then there will be a run to the US dollar there'll be such a demand for the US dollar that the dollar will become a bubble in itself and that's when he will sell out. And look, when you actually look into that uh, thesis, yeah, it does make a bit of, quite a bit of sense. So um, so I do have a little bit of my portfolio uh, in that play, very similar to, to Jim Rogers. So anyway, uh, guys, I'm going to finish off this video. I'm, I'm, um, I'm not going to tune out right now. So don't, don't, switch off i'm going to share a little two minute clip uh that just popped up on my twitter feed this week uh it was it, it's funny there's a there's a lot of truth into it in it uh it's a little rap rap song about uh dogecoin and uh and all that so i hope you enjoy it anyway guys take care uh i'll see you again on another episode of finance uncut Coming up, bad news for savers as even those with high interest savings accounts are seeing their money disappear thanks to inflation. But first, we'll detail every possible thing you could die from. He's a rational investor, dividend digester, saves some numbers paycheck just like all his ancestors. Him looking for high yields? That's never the case. He's seeking 6% return. Slow and steady wins the race. But when he checks his accounts just to see what they're fielding, it's like driving in Maryland. Ain't nobody yielding. 
thing. What is he to do? He shouldn't be in a drought. So he visits his advisor just to sort it all out. Inflation's higher than your bond rate. That's what I was fearing. So your savings account is slowly disappearing and your CDs are pointless. That's not very funny. What would you like me to do? Put it all in dog money. Dog money, dog money, dog money, dog money. I'm trading it in for dog money, dog money, dog money, dog money, dog money. I'm putting it all in dog money. My 401k is now a 401k9. The sum of my net worth ain't no longer in a straight line. I'm making small fools. I ain't gonna be a pun. I sold my IRA and bought an NFT of one. All in on Doge, I dish them out like a Tommy gun. You think I was statehood the way I'm passing on Washington? I feel like Matt Gates. You know what I mean? Assuring everybody it's above 18. It's a modern day gold rush. The price is a boom. Like Reggie White versus the Oilers, I'm headed straight to the moon. My broker's calling. You know that it's on. Buy dog money. Don't stop till it's dawn. One more air base, two more museums, three more walls, four more Supremes, five more stadiums. We're all out of fiat. Can you take trillions of these and go and make a Xerox? We pay our debts in our currency that might be unfurled if it's no longer the reserve currency of the world. Confidence in the dollar is permanent. Just ask any scholar. People are exchanging their dollars for dog money. Dog money? Dog money. Dog money. We trade in it. For dog money, dog money, dog money, dog money, dog money. Yeah.